Hello, my name is Sarah. If you're new to my channel and if you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. I am a homeschooling mom of four kids. I'm also pregnant with our fifth child due in a couple of months. And I wanted to take a few minutes to show you how I prep my supplies for the Good and the Beautiful Biology Unit. We are in our sixth year of homeschooling and this is our first year to use any of the Good and the Beautiful curriculum. And when I made the decision to switch specifically for science, one of the things that I researched was how other people prep the science units. Um, I just wanted to make it as efficient as possible and help everything kind of to run smoothly um, through the unit as best as I could. So I watched a number of different videos on this and I gleaned some good information from multiple people. Um, I didn't do it exactly how any one person did it. So I thought I would share with you the way that I ended up doing it and hopefully that might help you as well. We are still currently using the marine biology unit. I don't know if I said earlier just biology, I meant marine biology. Um, we're on lesson 10 of 13, I believe right now. So um, we've gotten almost all the way through it. And having gone through that much of it, I feel pretty good about how I have it all organized and how I have it prepped. And so I thought this would be a good time to share that with you. I also really appreciated the videos that other people put out on this because I have to admit when I first got um, the curriculum, it was a little overwhelming to me on how exactly to sort through it, um, what papers should be taken out of the manual, the teacher's guide, what should be left in, what exactly I should be making copies of. They do guide you to that, but still with it, all of that guidance that they did give, some of it was still confusing for me. So I wanted to hopefully also take out some of that confusion, help you to be able to decipher the best way for you to prep your materials as well. So I'm gonna flip this camera around and show you the materials, how I store it, and also how I prepped it. So this is pretty much all of the materials that I have and how I store it for this marine biology unit. I do also have this folder that I have worksheets for the kids, so they're just in here in order that we're gonna be using them and the right amount of copies for my three kids that are using this. Then I also have this supply um, box that came from two bo tool boxes for teaching. Unfortunately, they are going out of business with their online store, so this is not necessarily available anymore. If you, They are going to be in business through their online store till the end of 2019, and then after that, it's only their physical store in Utah that you can get these from. So um, I did appreciate having this for this specific unit um, because it did come with a lot of items that um, were, would have been a little bit more tricky to have found and purchased on my own. Not all of the units I feel like I would have purchased one of these for, but this one was nice. So if you happen to see this video before they go out of business or if you're in the Utah area, um, you might want to check them out. I will probably be reusing these boxes and just storing supplies in them in the future. So the way that I prepped and am storing this material is with the thought process that I will probably be using this again at some point in the future with my younger kids, but as also with my older kids to go over it again, like three or four years down the line is my guess. So with that in mind, that's also why I did some of the things that I did. So first let's go over the manual here. The teacher's manual, that's what I'm calling it, um, that it came with did not come spiral bound like this. It comes completely loose leaf. They intend for you to three hole punch it and put it in a binder. I personally like mine bound or spiral bound. I use a pro click binder that I purchased from Amazon. It was rather pricey, but if you've seen any of my other like curriculum review videos or anything like that, you'll know that I use this a lot. I use it for my um, curriculum lesson planner and then manuals like this. I have used it for things for my kids. So I've gotten a lot of good use out of it. So for me, it was worth the money, um, but it, it was definitely on the more the pricier side. Um, and I really appreciate not having to go to an office supply store just to get things spiral bound for myself. So like I said, they intend for it to be in a three room binder, which means that you are able to take out 
pages as you need them for each lesson. So in some regards, some of this, if that's the method you're choosing to go with, um, you won't, wouldn't necessarily have to do what I'm going to show you I did. Um, but if you're going to bind it like this, you will probably want to do something similar to what I show you. But at the beginning of each lesson, they do tell you what you need to prep ahead of time. And so if there are any copies that you need to make or um, any type of prep work you need to do, they will typically list it right here at the beginning of the lesson. So definitely pay attention to that as you go through your book. Um, there are these things called mini books that are go with certain lessons. Um, so they tell you to cut and assemble that ahead of time, which I highly recommend doing because that would have been very time consuming otherwise. Um, cutting out vocabulary cards, there's getting copies of things for your kids or just having things available for yourself. Really quick before I forget, I did laminate the front and the back covers of my manual so that will help it to be a little more durable as well. These pages are fairly durable too, so that helps. Um, so back to the prepping. What I ended up doing, what I realized was a better method to go about it, originally I first went through all of these pages and tried to figure out what needed to be pulled out of here, made copies of and things like that. What I ended up doing and what I will do from the future, from here on out if I continue to use their unit studies, is I went through the PDF file of this, which I got with the purchase of this hard copy, and I went through that and printed off anything that could be printed off in black and white because I don't have a color copy or a color printer. So I went through the PDF version first, found out what I could make in black and white, and I went ahead and did that, whether it was just sheets that I was going to use as instruction, but more so it was sheets for my kids and what they would need for their worksheets. Then I went through here and I pulled out at the end of the lesson, they will have, and it's not in here because I've already pulled them out. Okay, so this is a good example of one of the black and white sheets I would have made a copy from from my computer. Um, and so I just left the original in here that was made of a black and white copy. And then that's the key. If there's any page that says key on it, I leave that in here. This is something that I realize now that I probably should take out. As I went through this unit this year, I realized there were pages that I left in here that I should have taken out to have as easier reference for my kids. So again, if you're three hole punching these, you could easily pull this out of your binder and show it to your kids that way. But since mine is bound and with the ProClick binder, I can actually undo this, take out a page and then click it all back together. That's one reason why I love this thing. Um, but oftentimes if there was a page like this, that was something that the kids are gonna be referencing or looking at, a lot of times they, they want you to reference a picture and then you're still talking about it, reading off their script. So it was a little tricky trying to show this picture to the kids while also keeping my spot back in the lesson back here and reading off of this, especially if the orientation was the opposite of each other. So um, I eventually ended up going through and taking out any pages that looked like this that were something that might be a reference page that I would be showing the kids while I'm also reading out of the script in this manual um, and including that in that pouch that I already showed you and I'll go through all that in a minute. But that was one of the things that was confusing to me is like which pages should be taken out and left as loose leaf and which ones should be bound in here. So what I ended up doing was basically, like I said, anything that was a black and white copy I left in here because I could just get that off my computer. And then if it said key on it, then I would leave it in here. Otherwise it needed to come out. Um, this was another thing that I left in black and white or I can get it off black and white. It didn't need to be in color. There are certain pages in here that they had color on that yeah, it would be nice to keep in color, but for the most part, it wasn't necessarily ne necessary. So I tried to only have the pages that it really mattered that they were in color for my kids because color copies are rather expensive. And I didn't realize how much until I made copies of all the colored pages for my three girls. And I ended up spending over $30 just in color copies for this one unit. So while the unit itself is very affordable, 
those color copies can definitely add up. So I would just caution you to really be selective if money is tight in that regard or you just want to be more frugal, um, to really be selective what you choose to keep in color and what is okay to be in black and white still. So that's basically what I did. Like I said, I went through the PDF first, found what I could do in black and white, and then everything else I removed and either I removed from here before I bound it or afterwards I took it out later and realized I should have left it out. Um, and then I put it into two piles. One was either going to be worksheets that are copied for my kids and the other was going to be pages that I laminate and have ready to be able to show the kids as reference material. So I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to talk about as far as the manual goes. So let's go to that pouch and I'll show you everything that I have in there. So I took some time finding this type of pouch. Um, other people had used like poly zipper things. I don't remember exactly. I tried one that was a cheapy one, probably from the Dollar Tree or something, and it did not work very well. I am really happy with these pouches. It has a good zipper at the top here. It's very sturdy material. I will have a link down below to my Amazon store, um, and I will have a link to this these pouches in case you're interested in them. I can see these holding up for a long time and I'm really, really happy with the quality of them so far. First, I'm going to show you how I kind of have it organized. So in the front here, I have the mini books and I'll show you this a little more fully in a second. Then I also have baggies for the different lessons and the um, cutouts and different things that you use for each of the lessons. Oh, and then in the very front, I have a clip with the vocabulary words that we haven't used yet here. I did not originally have all the cutouts and baggies with a lesson number on them. And I recently just did this because I had kept typically some type of identifying factor clip paper clipped with the materials. Um, but I didn't do it for all of them. Like if there was a heading on the page that it came on, I would try to keep that paper clip to the pictures or the words or something like that. So I knew what it was. But even that wasn't quite enough. Having it by lesson, I realized is a much better way to organize it because then I can just pull out the bag for the lesson that we're on and I know all the pieces are there and I'm not digging through this thing trying to find which pieces were missing still. And then back here, I just have those laminated pages, those reference materials that I was talking about that I laminated. And then kind of in the middle here because we're still going through it, this is just a sheet protector that I have all the copies so that in future years, I have everything ready to go here. Um, whether it needs to be a color copy or a black and white copy, all the pages are in here. So I can just pull this out and make copies as needed. I have it all together, but I'm using it as a divider between all of the laminated reference materials that we've used so far in our lessons and the ones we have yet to use. So after I use one, I pull it We've pulled it out, used it. I stick it in the back here to keep it in order. And then this is just, like I said, oh, where'd it go? This sheet protector is just acting as a divider between what we've already used and what we have yet to use. So let's first talk about the mini booklets. So what I did to prep these is I took out all the pages from all the lessons that had a mini booklet. I laminated all of them. And then again, I went with my pro click binder and spiral bound them. Um, Someone in one of the videos said that they wish they had just put all of the mini booklets together like this. They had gone ahead and done them as separate booklets. And so I took her, um, her regret, I guess, and I did it myself in one single booklet. And I am really glad I did because it just made it easier not having a bunch of multiple booklets around. Um, and we would just read through one of them. And then when we were done with it, let me see if I can get to the next one really quickly here. When we were done with it, I would just leave it like that so it's all ready to go for the next booklet. So I didn't have any tab dividers or anything like that in here to um, designate, you know, which one was which. It was just I had them all in order according to the lesson and I would just leave it open and ready to go for the next lesson. So that worked out really well. One thing I do want to draw your attention to though, and it wasn't so much of an issue with this one, but I also was prepping the space unit at the same time that I was doing this one, because that's the unit we're working on next. And it happened more with those mini booklets than this one. 
Um, but at least with my binding, I don't know if it would have been different with like a regular spiral bound one. Sometimes the words were really close to where the holes happened with my binder. And so it would punch through the holes. So when that happened, like I just wrote in on the side here, what you can't read at the top here, I wrote it in on the side there. Again, I said with the space one, this happened more than this one. I think this is the only spot in, in these mini booklets that it happened like this. And so with the space one, what I ended up doing was I would just write the sentence that was um, kind of missing because it was hole punched on the back here. So I still had the sentence to be able to read from. Um, it'll, it'll be a little trickier than just being able to read it from the front here. But that's how I kind of got around it. I'm going to be more aware of that in the future if there's more mini booklets and other units. I just didn't realize that until I was putting it together and saw that, oh, I hole punched through a whole sentence there. I thought another way you could do it was if you bound it on the side instead of on the top like this, you might not have as big of an issue with that because the words don't tend to come as close to the side. Plus, I have a little give here with the lamination that I did. Um, and I laminated it again just because I wanted this to be able to last. And even if I wasn't going to use it again, I think I still would have laminated it because it just it's so much sturdier this way. And this way also, if my kids were looking at it, I know that if something spilled or they had grubby hands, it would be easy to clean up. So that's pretty much everything I wanted to show you with the mini booklets. And I, other, other than possibly cutting off stuff, I really liked how it turned out and it worked out well for us. I believe I pretty much touched on everything I wanted to already with these bags. Um, like I said, the vocabulary cards I just have in this binder clip. This works well because I had them in order of the lessons and I just pulled off the right ones that we needed for each lesson and then stick them on our wall um, after we had talked about them. So that's the vocabulary and this got used with more than one lesson. You could, if you wanted to, put them in with the baggies, but there isn't a bag for every lesson. So I wouldn't wanna create a whole new bag just to put vocabulary cards in them. I think that would be a waste plus take up unnecessary space in that zipper pouch. Then like I said, I just have the bag with the lesson number on it. This is a much better way than how I started using or had them placed in that zipper bag. Um, one thing that is a potential thing you might wanna do is on the back of the cards actually write, you don't have to like write lesson and then three on here, but even just writing a three on the back of each of these cards. So in case for some reason, they ever got mixed up with any of the other bags, um, you would know which bag it belongs in. I may end up going back and doing that. I haven't committed to that yet, but that was something I just thought of was that just to make sure that things don't end up where they're not supposed to be and stay in the right bag, you might wanna do something like that, just mark it in some way. I did laminate every single one of these, again, for durability and just making it last longer. And hopefully if we use this again, it'll be almost like they're brand new. It did take a number of hours to prep all of this. I am not gonna lie, it took quite a while. But once it was done, it was pretty much done for the whole thing. So I was really happy about that part of it that once you get it prepped, you're pretty much done with your prepping. Um, so it was just these lessons in the bags, in that zipper pouch, and it's working out great. Then here is those reference materials. If you see the, some of them have the hole punch because I ended up taking them out of the manual, like I already said, um, and laminating them. It just makes it so much easier having it loose like this. I can throw it on the ground where the kids are while I'm still reading out of the manual and they can look at it to their heart's content. I did put what lesson number on the back of these. That way I know that I'm grabbing the right ones um, and can keep them in order as well that way. One re one person who was video I watched on this ended up keeping a black and white copy of each of these pages that they took out of their manual in the manual just so that they would have a reference and be able to see what pages went with which lesson. And I can totally see why she did that after having gone through this. So that might be another option you might wanna do. I'm not gonna go back and do that, which is one reason why having the lesson numbers on the back is helpful to me. Um, 
but that's definitely something you might want to consider doing is having a black and white copy um, in place of these colored ones in your manual and that way you're sure for sure going to know which page, pages belong where and you wouldn't necessarily have to reference your um, PDF file and get back on your computer or your phone or however you access it just to see that. Then the last thing are the worksheet pages for the kids. Like I said, this is just a sheet protector I have with all of the copies in it and I kept them in order by lesson but also by color copy versus black and white copy. So I can just pull out the black and white copies, copy those separately as black and white, do the color copies separately, and then just mix them together in the right order that they're supposed to be. And then I leave them in this sheet protector so I have them all ready to go. And again, it's acting as that divider that I already showed you. And I just put all of the copies in order together in here and I went ahead and three hole punched them ahead of time because my kids keep them in a binder um, once we're done with them in a section of their school binder so it's already three hole punched so we're not taking the time to go um, three hole punch everything um, in the middle of the school day they can just sl slip it into their binder right away. Well I hope showing you how I prepped all of my the good and the beautiful marine biology unit um, I hope that showing you all that helped you to kind of figure out what might be the best way for you to do it as well. Um, you can see our vocabulary cards are up here and that was one of the crafts that they had you do when you're learning about turtles, sea turtles and versus land turtles. Um, so if you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below. I'd be happy to answer them for you if you have used the unit and you have a different way of organizing or prepping it. Leave those in the comments below too because not everyone does everything the same and I'm really just hoping to give you an idea of a way to do it um, that might be good for you especially because like I said I felt a little lost while I was doing it and seeing videos on how other people did it really helped me out so I want to help you out as well um, just in case you're looking for something like that. If you like this video please give it a thumbs up that really helps support my channel. If you aren't subscribed and you would like to see more content like this like this, hit the subscribe button down below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.